OK, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Hello, and welcome, everybody. I hope you're having a great time here so far. And well, let's dive right in. Are you on the edge or still in a cloud? I guess you might be a little bit on edge about the title, because in the previous years, I guess you spent a lot of effort and time into learning about cloud computing and moving all the applications to the cloud. And now I'm coming here and kind of saying tongue in cheek, well, the cloud, that's kind of old hat. The edge, that's where you want to be. So don't be too nervous about that. Um, but it's a very interesting paradigm shift. And let me be your guide in the next few minutes to this new paradigm of edge computing. First of all, um, raise a hand if you already heard about edge computing and maybe know a little bit about it. Perfect, excellent. Um, again, who of you is already implementing edge computing or planning to? Perfect. Well, oops. then I guess you, if you heard a bit about it already, you agreed this is edge computing, right? I mean, computing power at the edge. Do you agree? Well, um, probably not completely. Uh, computing power at the edge, yes. But um, let's take this definition from the Linux Foundation. And they define edge computing as the delivery of computing capabilities, that is processing power, to the logical extremes of a network, that is kind of the edge of the network. And why would you want to do that? Well, uh, to improve the performance, operating cost, and reliability of applications and services. As I said, in the previous years, everything more or less was moved to the cloud, but, well, everything that was possible or made sense in the cloud. Not everything does make sense. Therefore, OK. We want to move the processing power again to close to where the data is created. That's what edge computing actually is all about. I mean, if you think about it, when you do cloud computing, the data is not created in the cloud. It's created in the various sensors, from robots, from wherever, but definitely not in the cloud. So now we want to move the processing power to the data and not the data to the processing power. That's basically what edge computing is about. And now you could ask, well, why would you want to do that? Well, there are many, many potential reasons. Uh, I picked three of them here. One of them, of course, is bandwidth. I mean, there is a lot of data that simply, well, you couldn't transfer to the cloud simply because um, there is not that much bandwidth, enough bandwidth for it, or, well, it's too expensive to transfer everything. Let's say you have a lot of uh, surveillance cameras or something else which produce a lot of data or 360-degree videos or something like that. Uh, bandwidth might be an issue. For example, um, I worked for several years at CERN. You know this huge 27-kilometer uh, LHC circular collider, where they smash protons and then try to detect what happened after these protons um, collided. And there, I don't know the exact rates now, but let's say the data that was more or less uh, well, collected there is in the order of multiple of terabytes per second. So I don't think you will have the bandwidth to move that to the cloud right away. And therefore, you want to process the data at the edge already, filter it there, maybe create already some meaningful analyses, and only transmit a part of it, if at all, to the cloud. Another important reason is privacy. Many things have not been moved to the cloud yet simply because there are privacy issues. In particular, let's say you have, again, surveillance cameras. Um, maybe you don't want to have them, uh, all the data, in the cloud. Maybe you want to analyze it first, whether there is something important on it, and only then transmit the final results to the uh, cloud. Say uh, you have something like a section control in Austria, which is kind of um, 
detecting um, whether you were sticking to the speed limits. Um, actually, you're only interested in those license plates of the cars that were driving too fast. You're not interested in all the others. So therefore, for privacy reasons, you don't want to upload the entire information to the cloud. You only want to transmit the data that is really relevant and keep everything else away. And maybe the most important one, at least for me, is latency. Because latency is something you definitely cannot achieve with a cloud at the current stage, simply because, um, well, it's too far away. Even if you say um, you would consider speed of light, I currently live in Frankfurt. Even if you consider speed of light, then you would need already two milliseconds for a round trip time from Frankfurt to Vienna. And that's, as I said, speed of light, best case. We are not talking about processing uh, time yet, etc. That's really just transmission. And for some use cases, have a look. Let's have a look at the latency requirements for some use cases. Virtual reality, for example. Um, there are studies that claim to have a really good virtual real reality experience. You want to aim for something like 20 milliseconds latency, not more. 20 milliseconds, you see, with cloud computing, uh, I don't think you will achieve that. It's even worse, actually, with augmented reality, because there you have to take into account that not only you are moving, but also, let's say, if you have a, a camera, um, a smartphone that you point at something, then also the light changes, um, the objects that you're actually recording change. So it's not only about you who, cha who moves, but also about everything in the scene. So therefore, some studies again uh, suggest that for a real perfect AR experience, you're even looking for uh, a perfect latency of five milliseconds. And five milliseconds is really very aggressive. That's something you can only achieve with, well, very close edge computing. So if you have to be very close to really be able to achieve um, five milliseconds, including all the processing. So we see already with edge computing, it's the same thing as any uh, real estate investor will say. Uh, it's all about location, location, location. So where do you actually process your data? Sorry. Well, and that's the question. How close exactly do you want to go? Do you need to go for this processing? Where do you have your edge processing? And, well, if you ask me, it's a quite clear answer. Uh, let's assume you have a 5G network or something, or 4G, something similar. Um, then the edge processing takes place close to the space stations here. So you connect to the base station, which is kind of your edge of the network where you connect to. And then very close to those, you will have some kind of mini cloud that processes your information. So it's really at the edge of the network so to speak. Now, I don't know whether all of you agree. Is this a good place? Is this the only place where we can have edge computing? Well, um, there is an, a talk tomorrow by a guy from AWS. I think the name is Niels Hoyer, if I remember correctly, um, who will talk for sure about edge computing with AWS. And I'm pretty sure he has a slightly different definition. Because when he will be talking, I guess his edge is more likely on the device edge. So not here at the network, but close to the device. Or maybe not directly on a device, but let's say on a gateway server that you have close by and where you connect all the various sensors to. And also if you talk about um, typical production plants, uh, they usually don't connect their robots directly to the internet. They usually connect them to a gateway server first, and only that server is allowed to connect to the internet then. So these are two other places where you can have your edge computing uh, in place, directly on the device, if the device is powerful enough, or on a gateway edge um, that is kind of close or connected to the actual sensors that you're using. 
So this is really just to make you aware that we have a lot of different places where edge computing actually can take place. It's in that sense quite a fuzzy term actually. Um, all it means is that you process the data somewhere between where it is generated and the cloud. But it's yeah somewhere in between. Therefore, if you read an article about edge computing or if you um, discuss with somebody about edge computing, always think about first um, where exactly are you processing the data? What are you talking about? Make yourself clear first where the location is and only then uh, you know what you're actually talking about. It's actually even more complicated. Um, for example, there is a reference architecture model for edge computing and you see it's not only a few places here but even more and you have several other uh, dimensions which you can take into account as well. I don't want to go into detail there, just so you know there are a lot of different um, dimensions to edge computing. All right. So now we know where we will process our data. Or do we really know it yet? Um, well, the question is, it depends on your requirements. What exactly are your requirements? And only then you can decide where to actually do the processing. Here I listed six different uh, dimensions, different uh, requirements. On the extreme left, we have here directly on the device, while on the right side here, we have processing in the cloud. And edge computing is kind of on the continuum between. First of all, bandwidth. Well, of course, bandwidth is always best on the device itself. Uh, no discussion about that. Then we have latency and jitter. Same thing. Latency is very low if you process directly on the device. The further you go to the cloud, the more latency you will have and also the more jitter you will have. So that might become an issue in particular for um, things like, well, as I said already, VR or augmented reality. Any gamers here, by the way? Do you think with cloud gaming, do you think a high latency will help you win the game? I don't think so. So latency is very critical for areas like these. Then we have privacy and context awareness. Well, privacy, of course, uh, if you have only the data very close to where it's recorded, it's easy to maintain the privacy. While if you move it to the cloud, well, it can always be kind of stolen. So many people are very, uh, uh, very wary to move very private information to the cloud. I mean, that's changing, but nevertheless, also uh, legislation doesn't allow you to move everything to the cloud because it might not be safe enough there. And even if it would be safe, um, well, it's easy to get stolen there in a sense. Context awareness, of course, um, on the device, you know exactly where the device is located, you know the surroundings, um, you know the, all the ambient uh, sensors, etc. So you know a lot more than you would know when you would compute something in the cloud. On the other side, the value of data usually increases when you go towards the cloud. Let's say I would be moving slowly on a highway. Well, if it's just my own data point, <laughs> it doesn't really tell you much. I might just having a lazy day and go slowly. If you record the same thing for a lot of different users, then you could kind of um, generate from that, well, uh, maybe there's a traffic jam going on there. So therefore, the further, the more information you have, the further you go to the cloud, usually the value uh, of the data is higher. However, that's not exactly true in the way that it is shown here, because quite often it is higher, but only to a certain extent. Let's say, same example as before, we have traffic information. Um, if you're from Austria and you're listening to the radio uh, and you listen to the uh, traffic news, well, if I'm driving in Klangfurt, I really don't care about the daily traffic jams in Vienna. Not my business. So there is a certain extent where the value of data increases. 
And there, that's actually a very good point, where you could use edge computing, because edge computing, as I said, is quite local. You could say, well, you're only interested in the data about a specific, um, about a specific road, about a spe specific region, etc. And after you, when you go further, the information is actually not relevant anymore. This is particularly true when you think of all the future car-to-car -car communication, car-to-infrastructure communication. There, it's really about having the information very local, and that's one of the main use cases for edge computing in the future. Then we talk about costs. Usually, it's more expensive to process something directly on the device, uh, simply because the utilization is not that good and well, in the cloud, you can have much more powerful machines with very good utilization. So, as a rule, the costs become lower the further you move to the cloud. Also, security. Security usually gets higher if you move to the cloud because you have these data centers there. Uh, they are usually heavily guarded. You have specialists making sure uh, that they are protected 24-7. While if you talk about a gateway server on a factory floor, well, I wouldn't say that's that secure. It's much more likely to kind of steal the entire thing. All right. So, you know this slide already. Now, I want to talk about this left area. The main difference between this one here and the network edge is that on this side here, you actually have control of the edge. It's not that somebody else controls the machine, but you actually own the machines where you run your edge processing. And there we have various uh, options at the moment. One, of course, is uh, if you look at Amazon AWS IoT Greengrass, um, is an excellent platform where you can run the IoT Greengrass core on your Edge device and maintain and, uh, um, that centrally. You can deploy stuff to that um, Edge core from the cloud, but then you run stuff locally at the Edge. What I particularly like about this is that you can actually even run lambdas on these edge devices that you maintain yourself. So that's actually, in my opinion, pretty cool. You don't even need to provide any containers anymore. Just write your lambdas, push them to the edge devices, and you're done. I mean, that's really awesome, in my opinion. Another option, well, Microsoft also has something, Microsoft Azure IoT Edge. Here, you run containers on these edge devices. Like all these platforms I'm now presenting, uh, they also provide, of course, centralized management and deployment, so you don't need to go to each machine separately, but you just deploy your latest version from the cloud as you're used to with cloud computing in general. They also provide um, a Vision AI dev kit. Um, that's kind of this camera, for example. This is um, which you can buy, and then you can run object detection right on that device in a distributed fashion without sending all the information to the cloud first. If you want to spend uh, a lot more money, you can also um, have this Azure Stack Edge, and this even has specialized FPGA chips inside, really targeted to accelerate machine learning. And of course, Google has something too, uh, Google Cloud IoT Edge, Again, these all work in a very similar fashion. Um, you deploy from the cloud and run something at the edge and pre-process the data there. So process data first, pre-process the data first at the edge, and then you send the final results to the cloud, and then you can store it in them in the cloud and further process them, analyze them, whatever you want to do. Edge compute, ah, cloud computing as you know it, basically. What's pretty cool there is um, Google Coral, which only recently went out of beta. Um, this allows you to build products with a local AI. If you look at these chips here, 
They, they, have, they provide the development board, then a USB accelerator, various PCI Express accelerators. Uh, this one contains the Google Edge TPU coprocessor, which allows to run TensorFlow models in an accelerated way. So with this one, for example, with the Google Coral chip here, it really allows you to, um, well, you just plug this, for example, to a Raspberry Pi, and you can run object detection right on your Raspberry Pi, which, well, I would love to have a bit more time to do that because that sounds pretty cool to me. Now let's move to some open source versions. Um, there are plenty of them as well. Uh, one of them is EdgeX by the Linux Foundation. Uh, this focuses on industrial edge, uh, industrial IoT edge, sorry, um, and tries to be vendor neutral. Other platforms are Starling X, Cube Edge, and many others. I mean, this field is really very dynamic at the moment. So really look at the one, um, look at everyone first, because it might have plenty of new features by the time you actually need them. OK, so this was the first part, where we said we own the Edge devices. Now I want to talk about the network Edge. And to me, that's actually the much more interesting part. Because, um, well, in the recent years, I guess many of you went serverless because you said, I don't want to care uh, about, I don't want to maintain these devices anymore. So why should you start maintaining your own devices again? And that's where the network edge is interesting because this one is completely serverless. And there are several platforms again. I just want to mention two of them. Um, it's not only them, of course. Um, edge Gravity by Ericsson, for example, and Mobile Edge X. In both cases, you use their own API, and they provide kind of edge clouds close to you, and they automatically determine which is the closest to you and process the data there and send it back to them. The disadvantage there is, well, uh, you have to use their proprietary APIs. So actually, what would be really cool for the future is if you would, could have a transparent access to edge clouds. How do you guys currently access a CDN, a content delivery network? Well, you don't. What you actually do, you, you just request a resource from a server, and the content delivery network kind of intercepts that, or is, it's rerouted to the CDN, and the closest one delivers you the information. So you, as the user, don't care about it. And that's actually what you would love to have with, cloud, uh, with edge computing as well. You don't want to say where exactly the stuff is supposed to be running. What you would like to have is just run it anywhere, just close enough. I tell you which latency I need, I tell you which bandwidth I need, you decide. And I don't want to care about that. This has plenty of advantages, of course, like simplified development, and also it works with legacy systems. And as a nice benefit, you could use the cloud as a fallback. So let's say in an area you don't have edge computing resources yet, but cloud computing would be good enough, just not perfect, but good enough. Then you could simply say, well, you don't intercept this traffic, it just goes to the nearest real cloud and is processed there. That brings me to 5G, finally. 5G? Well, brings a lot of new tools, new advantages, new technologies. Um, one of them is 5G already includes edge computing. It's called multi-access edge computing there. Um, and it's part of the standard. Yes, part of the standard, unfortunately, uh, not very precise yet. So there is still a lot of research going on. You're not able to use it yet but that's where we're currently doing our research on. And that's why I would like to present to you the 5G Playground Corinthia, recently opened. Um, here, for example, on the right side, you see our university. Here you see the Lakeside Science and Technology Park, like right next to Lake uh, Werther, Werthersee. And there we have a new kind of test facility for 5G technology. Why I'm telling you that? Well, 
in case you, your company, are interested, um, just contact us. You can also make use of this facility. This was built by uh, A1 in Austria, and currently we're having four research projects running there. Uh, one is virtual realities. So here we try to record something with a 360 degree, degree camera, upload it to the edge, process it immediately in the edge, and then send it to a user who can kind of walk through that VR scene as it would be more or less live. Because it's a very, well, very short delay only. So you could use that, for example, to kind of walk through a factory nearby where it's actually too dangerous to go through. And of course, for gaming, etc., as well. Then we have uh, communication in swarms. Uh, there is a new drone hole where we can test um, how drones can com communicate in swarms together and um, kind of arrange their positions automatically. Wireless industrial robotics. Currently, if you look at production plants, uh, robots are usually um, use cabling, which is very expensive, and secondly, you're simply not very flexible. So that's another thing where 5G in the future shall take over, because 5G, from the specifications, it provides a latency, or shall provide a latency of only one millisecond, which is really fast, and therefore it can, is good enough that really robots can communicate between each other via 5G and still not hurt anybody, which is the main point. And finally, we have smart city as well. Um, when you want to collect all the data from sensors all over a city, um, but you don't want to give away control over it, you want to process it directly at the edge as well. As I said, um, if you're interested, contact us. Um, it's a very nice first playground in Austria. OK, that brings me already to the end. The key takeaways I would like you to remember, well, the first one, the edge is near. In two senses of the word, well, first of all, it's near in the sense it's close to where you are. It's close to where the data is created. And secondly, well, it's clo uh, very, well, it's coming already. So um, in the next few years, there will be a lot of talk about edge computing. Therefore, the edge is near. Then the location, always remember, the location depends on your requirements. If you remember the different requirements are listed, it really depends what exactly is important to you, which of these requirements do you value most. Therefore, um, go for the right solution. And the third one, to prepare you for the future, well, go serverless. Because these network edges will definitely be serverless. So if you already move serverless nowadays and have a um, nice microservices architecture, then it's very easy for you in the future to kind of split that up and move some parts to the edge and process other parts in the cloud. All right, so thank you very much. Have fun exploring the edge. And if you have any questions or uh, want to know, would like to know more, uh, just contact me anytime. I'm happy to help you. And well, if you have, there, have any questions now, I'm heavy to answer. Thank you, Josef. So you. I think we have time for one or two questions uh, at the moment. So if you can show them up. Thank you. So, so the most upvoted question for now is uh, actually more of a philosophical question. OK. Uh, do you think edge computing has uh, the potential to improve current state of privacy, which obviously is not that good? Or there might be a risk that it might get even worse? What's your opinion? <laughs> uh, that's really hard to say. <laughs> um, it has the potential that you, for the same processing, for the same convenience that you have with cloud computing, you don't need to upload stuff to the cloud anymore. So therefore, the potential is there. Um, how people will use it, that's really hard to say. So. Um, that's the philosophical part. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the technology is there. Let's put it that way. OK, since we're out of time, uh, so mm -hmm. thank you again for sharing your knowledge. Please clap for Josef. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.